Okay, so I'm going to share with you how to create an interactive slideshow. In a previous video, I showed you how to do a slideshow with a timer. Now we're going to make this slideshow interactive based on the person's use of interactive using the mouse. So let's get started. First, what we're going to do, of course, is make ourselves a new file. And let's save this file. And let's call this... Uh, Let's call this Edge Interactive. And let's title the page Index Version 1. Now, similar to a previous video, or another video on YouTube, here's how I get started. First of all, I'm going to change my stage. I'm going to change my stage to 500 pixels by 350 pixels. Second thing I'm going to do is title the page. If you don't title the page, it's not going to come up in a search engine. So it's a good app to get into. So let's just call this photo gallery one. Now, the other thing what just happened there. Now, the other thing you want to pay attention to is this code right here. It's a good habit to call this code. What's going to happen here, guys, it's going to put this code inside your HTML file that you can edit inside a Dreamweaver, or Notepad, etc., etc. So what I typically do is change that to what the slide, what the file is about. So I'm going to simply call this photo gallery one. Make a change, save a change. Now, we're going to go to the file menu and import some files. Now, we talked about this before. If you go and import files that begin with a number, it's going to change the name for you. So what I need to do here is I'm going to select some files here. Notice that these files have numbers. Div tag IDs can have numbers. So therefore, I don't want to start this with a number. So I have two choices. I either go to my desktop and change the name or I can let Edge do this for me. So I'm going to choose Edge to change the name. I'm going to OK. So what's going to happen here is ID tags cannot start with a number. So it's going to say underscore ID tag. So I'm going to hit OK a few times. OK. Make a change. Save a change. Now, the first thing I want to do here before I build my animation process here, I want to set the overflow of the stage. So how to do that? So based on these choices, here's my graphic, here's my stage, here's my graphic, here's my stage. I'm going to select the stage and select hidden. Make a change, save a change. Therefore, anything outside the boundaries of the stage is going to be hidden by default. So what I want to have happen here, I want to click each photo and go to the next photo. So how can we do this? Very simply done. First of all, we animate the first photo. Now, you always want to start from the bottom up. If you start from the top down, this photo is going to cover up the other photos and you're not going to see anything. So I want to start with the bottom photo. So I'm going to select the bottom photo. I'm going to the P for, pen, for pin tool, P for pin. Now, for those of you that have worked with After Effects or Flash, this is slightly different, but it's much more intuitive. What this is going to do is pin to the future. So look at it that way. It's going to pin to the future. So what I want to see happen, let's say, excuse me, 0.7 seconds later, I'm going to click right here. I'm going to type in 0.7. That's 700 milliseconds. There's 1,000 milliseconds in a second. So therefore, I'm going to see this photo 0.7 seconds later. Then, width of this photo is 629 pixels. I'm going to take this number, I'm going to copy it, come up here to the X value, minus, paste. It's going to push it off the stage. Notice it created the keyframe for me right here. Now, in addition to this keyframe, I want this to have some kind of movement to it. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to say ease out, and I'm going to change that to elastic, and click back. Now, the next step is very, very important, and it's very, very simple. We're going to move the playback head. We can turn the pin off by simply hitting the P for pin. We're going to come right here, move this to the end here. It's imperative that you move this to the end of the timeline. I'm going to copy that, Command-C, select, and paste. 
select and paste, select and paste, select and paste, select and paste. Very simply done. So therefore, if I hit the space bar, it's going to play my slideshow. And if I commit return, it's going to play this just like that. So this is what it's going to look like on a website. Okay. Now here's the fun part. We want to make this interactive. Now, what I highly suggest you do, especially if you're new to a software program, like Edge is an example, that you get in the habit of saving as version 2, version 3, version 4. So I'm simply go to the file menu and save as. We'll call this version 1 BE interactive, enter, return. Now, when, notice that Edge created all these files for us before. What Edge does is create JavaScript and it creates the HTML file that you can put inside a Dreamweaver, you can publish inside of a browser, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So here's our objective here, okay? What we want to do is every time I click a photo, now I can create navigation buttons, arrows, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to keep this very simple. I just want to click the photo and go to the next photo. Click the photo, go to the next photo. Okay, so how can I do this? Well, first of all, I would have to have the playback head stop at the end of every photo. So let's do that first. I'm going to move my playback head to the end. If I hold down the shift key, that will basically snap right to that point. And I'm going to either click right here, or I can hit Command T for trigger, Control T for windows. And the trigger that we want to initiate is stop and Command S save. The second you hit save, it calls a dialog box. Now I can take this trigger, copy it, move to here, paste, move to here, paste, move to here, and paste. So therefore, if I play this, command return, nothing's going to happen. It's going to stop after the first photo. So that's what you want to have happen. I want to stop the playback head. Okay. Now, for those of you that are new to this, 90% of programming is deductive, logical thinking. So picture yourself out on a street and you want to take a cab to, say, the South Street Seaport in New York City. Okay, You can't just tell the cab, take me to the South Street, take me to the South Street. Take The cab's not going to pay attention to you because what you have to tell the cab first is stop. So as your playback head is going by, you just can't tell it to do something. You have to tell the playback head to stop. Therefore, you can interact with the object. Very simple premise. Okay. So what do we want to have happen? Once the playback head goes here, I want to select this photo. Okay. And if I click right here, I can interact with that photo. Open actions. I'm going to select the photo. Make sure my playback head is here, and I'm going to click right there. This dialog box is going to come up, and I'm going to pick click. These are mouse events right here. We're going to pick click. Say that five times fast. Pick click. And based on these choices, what we wanted to do, we wanted to play. It's really that simple. We wanted to play. So I can take that same. I'm going to take the same understanding here. So the playback head is stopped. If I click, it's going to play. Okay, I'm going to click right here. I'm going to click right there. I'm going to click and play. Because the playback head is going to stop because this is what this action is telling it to do. This trigger is telling the playback head to stop. This interaction is telling the playback head to play. It's going to play until it runs across a stop action. It's really, really that simple. I'm going to click right here on this photo. I'm going to click right here and click and play. Close. Select this photo and click and play. Click and play. Uh, just play once, by the way. Let me just delete that. Play. Okay. Make a change. Save a change. Now, if I hit Command Return, it's going to stop. But if I click, it's going to play. And if I click, it's going to play. Now, important step here. This might be slightly confusing to people because how would they know to click? There's nothing to tell them to click. 
So how can we solve that? Well, back instead of edge here, we can basically go to the first photo, which is right here, and based on these choices here, again, photo is not selected, photo is not selected, stage is selected, stage property, photo property, stage property, photo property. So with the photo property selected based on these choices, I'm going to click cursor, auto, and I'm going to pick the finger tool. I'm going to do the same thing for this one and pick the finger tool. I'm going to select this one and pick the finger tool. And I'm going to select this one and I'm going to pick the finger tool. So therefore, if I save that and it command return, there's my finger tool. So that's international symbol for, hey, click something. So if I click, it goes to the next photo, click, it goes to the next photo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how I get a simple interactive slideshow. I guess I didn't do the first one. So let's play this one more time. Command turn. Photo, 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 photo. It took seconds to do this. It's really this simple. Now, if you support what I do, highly, I highly suggest you go to my YouTube site. So I suggest you go to my YouTube site and on the front page here is 50% off coupon for Adobe Edge course. This is a full A to Z in-depth course that I update every single month. I update monthly, sometimes two, three, four times a month. So that's gonna take you to this page. You can read some of my reviews also go to my full course, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's it for this particular tutorial. Support what I do. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing a lot more cool stuff with Adobe Edge. Talk to you soon. Carpe diem. My name's Robert.